Good morning, all. Now, have you seen the film The Imitation Game with Benny Cumberbatch and Keira Knightley, all about code breaking uh, during the Second World War? Well, I've watched it and it was excellent. And I thought the only thing I can do as a follow up is to come to Bletchley Park. So that's what I've done. Secrets Revealed, introducing Bletchley Park. So this is how the uh, dispatch riders would bring the coded messages up from uh, the southeast and the east coast on these uh, old motorcycles. So this is an Enigma. You can see the two rotors on the left there and uh, the plug board on the front which was what gave it all the huge number of different combinations. But these rotors are interesting. We've got, uh, I presume, 26 contacts on one side and 26 contacts on the other and then the wiring between them was well it wasn't random but it was complex different for each of the uh, well originally three rotors and then they went to five rotors so the machine operator would take three of five and place them into that rotor area on the top there you can see here the uh, interwiring inside one of the rotors uh, all 26 contacts sort of linked in this complex spaghetti from one side to the other and of course all the rotors were different there's some really nice uh, sort of cut paper strips here which could be slid up and down to uh, some of the manual methods that were used in the early days for uh, code breaking got some uh, old translation books here like this one which is uh, Japanese translations. And now the bomb is running. And we're waiting for it to stop. Oh, oh okay. Not jump. Jump. So we have the problem. And this is from the back of the machine. The mechanisms are basically those of a myelometer where the first reel makes a complete turn and then that nudges the second reel one position. And there's a whole oiling system which squirts oil onto all the gears and slides and bits and pieces. And the thing on the left here is the diagonal board. I haven't quite got my head around what that is. And then on the right, we've got the plug boards where they connect letter pairs that the machine is essentially testing to see whether uh, those letter pairs are correct. Of course, uh, back in the day, these wouldn't have been PVC coated wires. These would have been, well, presumably cotton coated, I guess. This is quite interesting. This shows how the uh, bomb rotors were wired using these assembly jigs. Quite complex wiring going on in there. There's a little demonstration showing how these cogs and slides and the oiling mechanisms work. I'm not sure what it means where it runs slow for the last section though. Hmm. And here's the uh, slate statue of Alan Turing. There are lots of different variants of the Enigma. This one has four rotors. So this was this is the naval M4 Enigma, and uh, this one is a Abwehr Enigma which is a sort of mini enigma smaller than the standard one and this one has no plug board on the front okay so now I've got a chance to get in really close to one of these receiving sets the big uh, tuning knob there I'm not sure what that dial is telling us but look at this wonderful cotton coated cord and it's just great I presume they had, uh, it was copper with 
rubber and then this woven cotton outing. Lovely old pair of headphones and that old speaker. The speaker doesn't look particularly old but I'm guessing it is. And uh, this one's a frequency meter EC22 something from October 1944. Well, a wonderful old thing, complete with all the uh, tables that you'd use in conjunction with it. And now we're heading towards the mansion, which is over there. And here is the famous Hut 8. Uh, so this is Alan Turing's office, and uh, Alan Turing's desk, and the famous coffee mug chained to the radiator. Alan Turing's wardrobe, and uh, pigeonhole. And what else is in Hut 8? I wonder. Perhaps rather ironically, a lot of these interactive displays are using these big LCD screens with touch sensitivity. Certain irony there. And in this room, there's a whole exhibition about carrier pigeons. It's hard to believe that this was a reliable system, but evidently it was. And uh, now we're going to have a look inside the mansion itself. And this is the ballroom where they've got an exhibition of props from the film. Ah oh, yes, here's the bar where they were drinking at the bar when they had that sort of moment of inspiration about how to crack the messages. So this is how the promotional material shows the bomb with Benny Cumberbatch standing in front of it. And here's the actual one that was used in the movie which has all this sort of additional switch gear down the side which looked very impressive in the film but uh, apparently wasn't actually on the original machine. Now this is what I really want to see, the National Museum of Computing, but we don't really have time today and it would be silly to pay £5 and go in and spend 20 minutes in there. So we're going to come back another day and uh, take a look at uh, all the stuff in here and that includes Colossus, the big valve or vacuum tube uh, co-breaking machine and loads of other stuff.